St. Ambrose was an educated politician, and we're going fourth century, so three something, in Milan, northern Italy. He was a devout person that eventually got involved with the church, and he was so, he was so bright when he explained things about God and the church and, and politics that the people fell in love with him. And when the former bishop of the area died, we have a phrase in Latin, vox populi, the voice of the people, called for Ambrose to be elected bishop, and he was. That doesn't happen anymore. I mean, there's, when a man is um, deceased or his bishop term is, is up, uh, the local bishops or priests uh, recommend to the local cardinal or local archbishop, uh, who they would like to see head the diocese. And then from all those and, and the history that, that the church gathers in Rome, uh, they select one. Okay, recently a bishop here from Ho uh, Brooklyn was appointed bishop in my diocese in Patterson, Bishop Sweeney, same way. He was recommended by his, his um, well, his, his mentor, who was, who was Bishop DiMarzio, who himself just retired. So the history goes on. I mean, we have a church built on history, and Ambrose is a key figure in the early church history. So he becomes Bishop of Milan, and years ago when I went to Milan, uh, they have his body preserved under the altar uh, in a, a glass coffin. He's, you know, it's bones, it's skeleton. But he's all dressed up in his bishop clothes. And it, it roots the church in Milan to history, going back to the fourth century. Of course, our faith goes back to Jesus, first century, and even before Jesus through the Old Testament. Now, today in the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah is updating for us in the 21st century his prayer. Now, his prayer was to the people of Israel who were returning home. In that time, when a country or a nation was destroyed or attacked by enemies, the belief among the peoples was God did it. God made it happen. God allowed it to happen. People still have that kind of uh, superstitious attitude about illness and, and destruction. But I think we realize as, as a nation and as a people, people have their own will. And when someone chooses to do something wrong, it's not God manipulating him or her, or not the devil necessarily, although the devil could certainly be influencing a person to do wrong. So, so we, we don't look at the destruction of Israel as a punishment from God, but they did, the Israelites did. So what Isaiah is saying, okay, now we're going back home. We're going back to Israel. We're going back to Jerusalem. We're going to resettle ourselves. And he is given a vision through God to pronounce these words that we just heard to the people. And, and the opening line of this section from 40, chapter 40, comfort, give comfort to my people, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Her guilt is expiated. She's, she's received enough punishment for her sins, and it goes on. So for us to update that in the 21st century means God consistently is our comfort. Now, we don't have to look at illness or war as a punishment from God, but we do have to look at, I don't say have to, we look at it as a, a natural occurrence. We're in arm's distance from Sloan, the hospital, and there are so many in this area. And people often come here, and at the end of Mass, we'll have the anointing uh, with the sacrament of anointing the sick, because we want God to intervene in history. We want God to get involved and help us heal one another, help us to listen to his words. So we don't say God is bingo, miraculously going to heal everyone, and bingo, make all fires go away, and bingo, uh, make destruction disappear. No, that's up to us. But with our faith, we have, it's like love, we have it in us to place our faith in God to assist what we're working for, 
what we're praying for and what we're working for. Healing, security, comfort. And that gives us a reason that's beyond ourselves to do what is good. We're doing it because we believe it's the right thing. We're doing it because we believe God is with us as we are praying or anointing or taking care of one another. And of course, through Isaiah, speak tenderly to Jerusalem, he's speaking that to you and me, that God cares for us. Okay, interpretation from antiquity is that punishment came from God. That's not our vision as a church. Why? Because of Jesus. Jesus did not come as someone to punish. Jesus came to open up the doors for all of us to come to church, to come to his house, to, to be one with each other. And his gospel today gives us a good example of that. If all of us, if there were 99 in, in church today, and one of us sort of went away, the good shepherd would go after that one because he's concerned. And he's concerned for every one of us individually. He knows us, he reads our hearts, he knows our minds. And he carries the, the metaphor one step further. There's more rejoicing for that one person who comes back to God, who is recovered, than all of us who don't need to be recovered because we're one with God already. Now, this is not a competition. It's an example of how much rejoicing Jesus himself has and God himself has for any of us who return to him for any of us who, who make a prayer for someone else, for any of us who does an act of charity. And you think, well, I'm not important. God doesn't notice. Yes, he does. The scriptures indicate that. Our faith indicates that. As God gave Ambrose the brains to be a great leader, he gives us faith. What Ambrose did with his brains was up to him. And he became a great bishop and an educator. And he educated and was a very instrumental in the, the, the uh, conversion of St. Augustine, another great saint from his period. So what we do with our faith is up to us. We can ignore it or we can use it. We can benefit from it or we can run from it. So our Advent message is we're preparing, we have a tree here, we have the Advent wreath. We're preparing to celebrate the birth date in history of when Jesus entered the world. But that is not December 25th, that's every day. For us to gather at the Eucharist, we're celebrating the presence of Jesus. We're celebrating him with us and that great phrase from, from Matthew's beautiful Emmanuel, the name that means God is with us. So we're here because Advent, because of faith, because of history, but most of all, because of Jesus who is with us.